See, so I said I would start off by showing you how to write the equation of square root function in five seconds or less, something like that, maybe 10 seconds or less. So let me uh, throw some random values your way. Let's go with uh, negative seven, two. And let's go over here to 10, uh, 31, something like that. All right, so I'm just going to write this equation now. So y equals, so we start with x plus 7, then y2, change, operational change, square root 17, 2 to 31, 29. That's that equation. Now I'd like to delve in a little more deeply into the geometric implications and, or origins, geometric origins, or at least what I think are the geometric origins, and uh, have a little talk about vertical line tests, stuff like that which I have very little understanding of. So I'll express that later. All right, so what are you looking at? I'm gonna make sure I get a full screen here so I can make sure the camera is on everything I wanna talk about. All right, so let's take the square root of X minus five. So what is that? Pause the video, see if you can answer it. What's it represent? Well, square root. A square root is the length of the side of the square. And I've got some user-friendly numbers here. I'm not picking the square root of 15. I don't know what it is offhand, but I do know the square root of 16 is four. So what is four? It's a length. And I use the marker cap. I use that part of the marker as a unit measurement just to get some uh, sizes that are eh, not too far off. So I'm referring to this as a user-friendly number because when I take the square root of it, I get that length. And that's what you're measuring. You're measuring area here. X minus five, we write something here. I mean, if you look at nine, what is three? Three is the square root of nine. So what is nine? Nine was the area of the square. And the square root of that area gives us the length of the side of the square. I'm not sure we stop long enough to make that connection. Uh, and it's important to. So the origins of the study are geometric and it doesn't hurt to follow the origins because concepts are built on top of each other in this discipline. And so why not start where concepts started and build from there? So we got a function that starts with the X values are the area of the square and the side lengths are um, the length of uh, what produces those areas. Now, before you studied this function, you probably studied this one. And I'm not working with the negatives intentionally right now, but if the side of a square was zero, there's no area. Side of a square is one. Area is one. Side of the square is, um, well, I guess I'm looking at these heights right now. All right, so I should go back to zero, one, two, three, four. The side of the square is three, the area is nine, side of the square is four. And I think you start to see the right side of that parabola. All right. And if you were to do the inverse of that, then the areas become the inputs. These are your x values. Here's our second one. Here's our, well, our first one is over here. This is the most important one. And the reason is um, there's no area, but the square root of zero is zero because zero times zero is zero. And if we looked at going from four to three to two to one to zero, then we're asking the question, what gets us negative one for a distance, the side of the square? That's that's awkward, right? Because in order to, you know, you can't really have negative area. If you can't have negative area, it's pretty hard to talk about what creates it. And then we're getting into the topic of imaginary numbers. So, and, and that's kind of awkward talking about this because negative three times negative three, you can argue is nine. And so therefore the square root of nine should be three and also negative three. But I think historically people saw these as distances and didn't know how to deal with, you know, I wasn't, uh, well, when did I come on the scene? No, anyway. Uh, let's keep talking here. So what do you have? Well, in one sense, when you're looking at y equals x squared, your square roots, user-friendly numbers, you're going up by one. Um, and 
The area, however, is increasing faster. You know, we can think of that as acceleration. And so our y values are accelerating, and we can think of these as the you know, digital one second, two second, three second, four second. And as those independent numbers increase, the areas are increasing much more quickly. The jump between here is one unit, the jump between these two is three, the jump between these is five. Interesting pattern that deserves discussion as well. But we're trying to get at um, how to write that equation you know, in five seconds. Well, you got a starting point. You've got a starting point. So boom, you got an X1 and a Y1. And it's not hard to locate that. Right? If you're looking at a graph, you know, you identify that location. And let's say that that location is um, 2, 7. And you recognize that the inverse of this, 0 gets you 0, 1 gets you 1, so 1, 1 is on the graph, 4 gets you 2. The inverse of 2 getting 4 is an area of 4 came from 2 units. So if this is over 1, then over 4, a little bit further, but you're only going up 1. And then the next one is going to be, you know, two units bigger than that, and so on and so forth, and going up one, and we start to see the trajectory of the square root function. So if you've got a graph and it looks like this, it sure looks like it came from the square root function. I mean, the cube root function has a similar look to it. I, I don't want to get too far ahead here, but let's just concentrate on you've got a square root function. How do you write the equation? Well. You got to start with x minus two for the reasons of, you know, the smallest side of the square is zero. So there's a minimum, there's a minimum value here. There's a domain restriction. Over here, the domain, you have to use x is greater than or equal to two for geometric reasons. All right. And then if there's the zero is created. Remember over here, zero, zero is the most important coordinate. It's the vertex of a quadratic, zero, zero, right? We're doing the inverse. Then it doesn't take much to simply write the correlation. You put a two in, you get a seven out. Then as soon as you put another X in, you've got a new area. And that new area is producing a particular square root value. Whether it's friendly or not, it doesn't matter. Take an X, it's an area statement. Let's take 16. 16 minus 2 is coming from <laughs> square root of 14. I don't think the square root of 14, let's pick 16 here. So 16, let's say we want 100, 100 units. I don't think the square root of 14 plus 7 equals 100. So therefore, you got to do a conversion. That is now the amount that doesn't work. How do you get from 7 to 100? 93 units. Now, that's no different than the equation of a line. The only difference with the equation of a line is we don't write the operation because it's to the first power. If this was a linear equation, then when you put 16 in, you don't get the square root of 14. You just get 14. And that's what you'd have to cancel. And if it was a different operation like squaring, well, then you got to do 14 squared. Why did I pick that? I'm not sure I remember what it is. 10 times 14, 140 and 56. I think it's 196. It's early morning. I haven't had my coffee yet. So that's what you have to divide out in order to get to 100. Because once you write that, it's on the canvas. So. I'll do a couple with you, rapid fire five. We had trouble with this on the last test. Like you get it. And so we'll do five in a row. You pause the video. You can definitely pause the video and I'll give you a little challenge on the last one where you can pause the video. And um, I think I'll cover all of the square root functions by doing this. So let's go with, uh, it's easier for me to write a table here. Let's go with 320. And let's go with 519. Uh, let's go, yeah, 519. Doesn't matter. 
Let's go. I always like the smaller X first, though, except for the last one I'm going to give you. So four. So each of these is the end point. First one I'm going to give you is the end point. And when I say end point, I'm referring to that drawing. So let me get uh, five of these in a row. That would fire five here. So let's do uh, four. No, I don't do five. That's a user friendly number. Let's do 10, 23. Let's go to 15, 47. Let's go with negative eight, one. Let's go to uh, nine, uh, 20. Let's go to uh, seven, 11. Oh, I like that. Is there another number out there that uh, clicks like that? Not that I can think of immediately. Let's do negative seven, 11. Let's do uh, 153 there, 53 over here. I'm not gonna reduce any fractions, but what we're doing is we're writing the equation in the X minus H plus K format. Should look somewhat familiar, some patterns here. And then the last one we'll do is, let's go negative five, 20, and let's go to negative 11, 30. Yeah, that's a little challenge question for you. So each time, you know, I'm just gonna go through these quickly, uh, but you pause the video and try and because you're trying to get this right on the next test and most of you got it wrong on this one. And it's just a little bit of work, you'll get it right. So I see a three. X minus three, I see a 20, I write a 20. I see five minus three is two, so I get rid of the square root of two, because that's an area statement. And I'm trying to get from 20 to 19, I'm going down one. I don't care if you write y equals, I'm trying to get you to understand how to write this. Start with a 10, X minus 10. You want a 23, well go ahead and write. You got a square root function, it also satisfies the fact that all your x's have to be bigger than or equal to 10 in order for this to work. All right, so you drop in a 15, you get the square root of five, right? Why don't I write it this way this time? You get the square root of 15 minus 10, right? When you drop in the second x value, you want that to equal 23, I'm sorry, equals 47. Right now, when you drop in a 15, hope you can see that you got the number one, which means you can write anything you want here. Anything times one is whatever you write here. We're trying to go from 23 to 47, which is up 24. All right, next one, just gonna do them now. Square root of X plus eight plus one, square root of 17, one to 20 is uh, 19. Okay, well, instead of going 11 here, 53, let's go from 11 to, uh, to uh, two. Let's go from 11 to two. And I don't think I've been, everyone I've done so far has been going up. This one's going to start somewhere and go down. And so we're trying to get some practice in. You're pausing the video, I'm just writing it. So X plus seven plus 11, 107. So there's 107, I get rid of that. I want to get from 11 to two, I better go down there. This is the end point, remember. Okay, and the one challenge question over there is, how do we go in the other direction? How do we go in the reverse direction? Um, this is a nice little uh, reflection. Right? And it turns out that you still have to write X plus five here. Um, let's see, so we're starting with, uh, how do I want to explain this? And I think I'm better off doing this first for you. So let's go from that. That'll be a little easier for you to see. All right, so we're starting at three, but we're not going in the right direction. We're going in the left direction. Turns out it's three minus six. It's the easiest way to write that. Now, when you put numbers like zero and one in here, I'm not getting square roots of negatives, which are imaginary. So I got a little reflection here. Another way to think of it is we probably started with X minus three. You want to go in the other direction? Put a minus sign in front of it. Well, that makes some sense. So we're going the other direction. So we're, we're uh, writing three minus X. And we want 20. There we go. That's the end point. But number bigger than three now don't work. And you put a four in here. That's a negative. They don't work. But going the other direction does. So we put a minus 11 in here. Three minus a minus 11 is so square root 14. And how do you get from 20 to 30? You go up 10. And now we've got 320 right here, negative 1130. 
So we got something that looks like that if you put it to Desmos and you got to take a peek at it. Well, there you have it. That's how you can write square root functions quickly and easily, and then we'll worry about solving them and playing with them in class the rest of the semester. But it's a piece of cake if you practice and think about it. All right, so hopefully you're watching this tonight and uh, getting it right on the next test. We'll see you in class shortly.